Good evening. Welcome to the Zoning Board of Appeals, February 8, 2017 meeting. Here we go. Ms. Shoup? Mr. Blaze? Here. Mr. Hebert? Here. Mr. Maroon? Here. Mr. Stark? Here. Mr. Crockett? Here. And Mr. Richard? Okay. Very good. So the uh, stand for Pledge of Allegiance? <coughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And there's a motion for the minutes of January 11th, 2017. Uh, move to approve as submitted. Second. Any discussion on those minutes? Seeing none, all in favor? Abstain. Abstain. Four. Yes, I'm abstain. Okay. And we will jump right into the appeals. First appeal is number 2597. It's a limited reduction yard size by William uh, is it Gite? Am I pronounce that? Gate? Giddy. 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 Thank you. Sorry. Um, 19 Church Street. This is map U32, parcel 24. And if you or a representative would like to take a stand, we will continue talking about your situation. I just want to confirm that you are William Giddy. I am. And you reside at 19 Church Street? I do. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, why don't you go ahead and explain what you're trying to, to, to accomplish, and we'll, we'll kind of help you through that process. Um, we had proposed and have been working with a builder to uh, put on a second story. Uh, it's right now a, a uh, 1,198 square foot ranch, and we um, would were looking to expand it so we could have uh, an extra extra bathroom, two bathrooms and bedrooms upstairs, uh, converting. Uh, some of the downstairs into more usable space for uh, friends and family and as well as ourselves opening up to having a dining room and, and an office. Right now we're crammed in to uh, some of the rooms <coughs> downstairs. So um, in going through the process, we determined that the, uh, the southern, southern side of the property uh, is not, does not meet the criteria for a 15-foot setback. And therefore, um, if we jut the second story in by six inches, we meet the limited redux uh, yard reduction size of 10 feet. So we put together an application asking for that um, limited yard uh, reduction on the southern side to, okay. to meet the specifications. Good. Anything else to add? Um, I, I would just say that it's a it's a it's a small lot. We have uh, two two children, two dogs. So we we chose to explore building upwards versus outwards, just because of um, uh, to protect the space that they have to uh, to play and, and be in. So um, that's sort of why we are not we weren't not considering building back. Uh, also, we have but two houses to the rear of us that are colonials, and the neighborhood is, you know, the immediate houses surrounding our house are uh, older and from the original neighborhood, but there are signs that the surrounding areas are, are growing, so we thought it was a good fit for the growth of the, the area. Um, and. I think there was one other question that was brought, proposed to me by Brian in the interim of my application, and we did, did double check that the uh, average height to the base of the building to the peak in the front was uh, less than 30 feet. So we did, I provided some calculations to Brian to support that. So that's all I have. Okay, thank you. I appreciate Mr. your Longstaff. consideration. Hi, welcome. Uh, Mr. Longstaff, anything to add on this? Um, as Mr. Gitti said, um, the fact that the house was <coughs> built in 1964 makes him eligible uh, under the criteria for a, a limited reduction of yard size. Um, any house built after July 1991 is not eligible, so he does meet that criteria. Um, and then um, 
the rest of it is basically the board having to review the other criteria for the limited reduction of yard size and make sure that the applicant has met his burden of proof on each of those uh, performance standards. Anything strange about the design or anything that you're concerned about or pretty nope. straightforward? No. Nope. I did not, did you send me the dimensions, the, uh, ele the uh, <coughs> height dimensions? I did. I, I sent you a quick note. You said you had it, but I, I didn't print 10 copies for it. I could right, but you didn't send me a copy of that. I didn't, I didn't get the information. I got the email. I didn't get the actual height. Oh, it, it turned out to be an average of 20, uh, 28 feet, and I sent the calculations were embedded in the email. Okay. Who did the calculations for you? Uh, uh, Dan Grant, who's the building engineer from uh, Village Builders. He's also a PE in the state of Maine. Okay. If the uh, if the average was 28 feet, what was the maximum height? Um, I'd have to pull up the numbers. Uh, there, like the spot that brings it into question is that there's the the driveway is a bit recessed, goes down, so the garage is sort of underneath the first story. So there's an extra seven and a half feet at that particular uh, midway point of the first half of the house, so that brought it, it might have brought it up over 30 feet in that one area, but then when you average it with the others, 28, so. Mm -hmm. well, okay. The way building height is measured on a gable roof is between, the midpoint between the eave and the peak, okay. but the, the measurement is taken from <coughs> the average grade <laughs> at the front of the house, that's how the definition is ordered. So because he's got a a retaining wall and a drop down for the garage. There's quite a, there's about a four foot differential between the grade at the front door and the grade at the garage. So okay. you have to take that average grade and measure up to that midpoint between the eave and the peak okay. to get the height. Okay. Great. Okay. Now uh, we do have a couple of letters on this. Why don't I read these into the record? Uh, they're relatively long. Any phone calls on this at all? Wouldn't we do that as part of the open? Uh, open. We can. Open. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. I'll hold it. <coughs> uh, why don't we go through and rather than that, we'll just go right to the requirements. And did you bring your paperwork up that has the answers to these questions that are asked of you? you I'm the, sorry? You have the paperwork that you brought, that you sent in and submitted with you. I didn't see you bringing anything up with you. I just wanted to make sure. No, you, I, I, what, what you mean you mean the questions that Brian emailed to me? Right. Do you have a copy of that here or you want a copy? So no, no. You need your responses in the application. Do you have your responses with you? Uh, I oh, you mean for all? No, I don't need those. No. Okay. Because we're going to go through each of those questions <coughs> as long as. Sure. You I know. mean, if you have a copy of that, I okay. can have. That's fine. No, I mean it's it's not it's not okay. mandatory that you read your. It just makes it easier. Your, your <laughs> question. It's just something for you to refer back to. Okay. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll read the question and then you can answer accordingly. Okay. Okay. Uh, the existing building or structures on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size re residential is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, or the lot is a vacant non-conforming lot erected. <coughs> so you can go ahead and just respond. You have to be on record by... It's on the second page. Oh, okay. The house was built in 1964. The requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use in and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Uh, the building, building a second story will change the home design from a ranch to a colonial. Building our addition in such a way will allow us the space needed to occupy the property while maintaining the property value from both aesthetic and functional standpoint. And due to the physical features of the lot, and or the location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with currently applicable yard size requirements. Uh, we would like to build a, a addition as a second story so that we can preserve the green space for the, uh, of the smaller lot for play by our children and two dogs. In order to conform the current setback requirement, we would need to cut off the second story by five and a half feet 
This would create an oddly shaped home that would not flow well in the neighborhood aesthetics. The impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. The proposed addition will be on top of the existing footprint and will not interrupt the uses of other properties in the neighborhood. The houses in the neighborhood consist of branches, capes, and colonial styles. Therefore, the colonial style will fit nicely with the existing structures in the neighborhood. And you haven't started construction or anything at this point, correct? You know, construction is contingent on acceptance of variance by the Board of Appeals. Okay, you own the property currently? I do. Okay. And do we have a point plan with this, or <coughs> are you okay with this? <coughs> 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 Plan, plot plan. Oh, okay, good. So why don't I do this? I'll open up the public. Does anybody wish to speak to this issue? Okay. Why don't we go ahead? Can I step down? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. You could state your name, right. address. That would yep. be great. Um, so my name is Zachary Barrett. I live at 17 Church Street, right next door. Okay. Um, so I would like to speak to a couple of points um, regarding this request. First of all, the, uh, the point of the character of the neighborhood. The, the street that we're on, Church Street, it's a dead-end street. Um, and the, from the end of the street where it connects to Route 1, <coughs> almost all the way down to the end of the street, the facades of all of the homes on that street are one-story facades, with the exception of some raised ranches all the way down at the end. And then at the very end of the street is where you see your first Cape style home. And, and that is where the road in, the, in that neighborhood of Church Street um, connects by a walking path to the, the newly developed neighborhood that Mr. Gee was referring to with the, the colonial style homes. Mm -hmm. um, that neighborhood is through the woods and, and behind our properties. So they are near in proximity. Aesthetically, when you look down Church Street, you're looking at ranch homes and Cape homes. Again, with a one-story facade, um, very moderate homes, and um, the, the lot sizes are all the same. So their lot size is no different than everyone else's. Um, I know that in the past, several of my neighbors have asked for variances for additions of dormers and sunrooms in the past that have been rejected due to the um, the 15 foot setbacks. Um, they've had to modify their plans in order to fulfill the 15 foot setback. Um, <coughs> so there, there's all of that to consider. Um, and I'm also concerned about the, the size, just the size of adding that second story onto a home, having the, a facade that's with that set down garage first floor, second floor, and then even a dormer on top of that, essentially making a four-story facade house sandwiched in between a one-story ranch and a one-story cape. Um, it, it just, the aesthetics of it concern me, but also being the next door neighbor, um, I, I'm not thrilled about having an imposing building like that right next to me. I mean, I'm not as close as Mr. Stone, who I believe wrote a, a letter in opposition to the variance, he's the one on the south side of the Gidis. Um I'm on the, the north side, but um, I'm still only 30 feet from that home. So the, the additional height is going to, it's going to affect my home. It's going to affect the amount of sunlight that comes in in the mornings. Um, it could even affect the amount of sunlight I get on my yard um, in the back just because of the close proximity. So um, I... I'm disappointed with the idea of going up and, and creating such a large home. Uh, I, I'm also surprised, uh, seeing as how they just moved in six months ago, that they didn't just buy a larger home to accommodate all the things that they're talking about trying to accommodate in this larger home and, and to have a yard that they can play in and whatnot. Um, so those are just some considerations that I'd like you guys to take into account. 
Okay. And so your 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 greatest concern regarding them building this with the extra five feet, because basically what they're doing is they're looking for five extra feet. Yeah, they're looking for five extra feet. It doesn't sound like um, they're all you know, they interested build in it building it without the five extra feet. If they do, it would it would be an awkward looking building. I I'm not thrilled about them building it anyway, but um, yeah, they are looking for the five extra feet so that it extends to end of roof, end of roof. Um, but yeah, I'm just I'm just not thrilled. I I have considered doing additions onto my own house and um, only considered going back into the lot and staying within the five or 15 foot setbacks mm -hmm. um, to preserve the the appearance of when you when you look down the street the roof lines are all relatively even um, they're all relatively similar style homes and it, it's just got um, you know a pretty consistent feel and this would just stick out like a sore thumb so. Uh, Okay. Yeah. Those are good. Uh, you mentioned. Uh, do you know any properties that were declined? You said you used specific properties that were declined. They they were asked to mo uh, modify their plans. Okay. I'm just not aware of any. So that's yeah. what I was wondering. Okay. Right. Um, um, maybe maybe Patty. Great. Great. Okay. Okay. Uh, so if if you're complete, I'm anybody else yep. would have any questions? Mm -hmm. Mr. Long, have a street view. I know sometimes you should report street views. And would somebody else like to speak? Great. <coughs> yeah, if you could state I'm going to read it's easier for me. That's what I do. Uh, could you just state your name in there, just please? My name, Mark, is Patricia Emery. I've never met you before. Never. <laughs> <laughs> you sat in that feature room band. <laughs> I faked it. <laughs> okay. Your address. Can I have so your, here we go. Your address. Your address. I'm going to tell you. 18 Church Street. So I'm Red Cross. So. My name is Patricia Remery and my family has lived um, at 18 Church Street since 1967. The original part of Church Street through 21 Church Street has narrow lots. The homes are built in the 50s and are modest in size. Now, I will tell you that the house on 19 Church Street was built in the 70s because in 1967 when we moved in there, that was a lot that we played in. So the house was built in the 70s. I believe it was built either 71 or 72, if that matters at all about anything. But I am, good to know it, I am quite sure, I'm, I'm just so. quite sure about that. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, let's see, so their house when it was built in the 70s, in order to, to fit a larger house on the lot, they built the, uh, the two-car garage underneath. So that house sits a half a story higher than the road. And um, that puts the roof line um, only like a foot shorter than the cape next to it. And the, the uh, road runs downhill. So the cape that is next to them, that is the closest, is the one that the, the roof is going to be higher than the average <coughs> roof height. It's going to be significantly higher because of the way that the, the land topography goes. And I don't know how you get back to those pictures. Is it the Stone property? Is that what you're referring yes. to? Okay. Yes. And Mr. Stone has post-traumatic stress, so he's not here. And uh, so I just wanted to get, you know, be able to, like, give somebody a visual thing. So I don't know how we get back to that picture that that Fine. shows the, um, uh, the diagram of the house. When we go to commercial, we'll be able to get it. Yeah, good. You go to the commercial. While you're looking, I'll keep reading. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, um, so the proposed addition, um, I thought about the size a lot. I looked at it and looked at it from my house, you know, and really, because, you know, you want to be fair to everybody. But... Um, I lived in a townhouse, a two-story townhouse, and there were two of us connected, and the, that's how big it's going to be, except for it's going to be a half a story higher, and it's a very imposing building. And you really can't tell, like, the, the, um, there is a little rise from the driveway up, but not much. So the man who, whose house is 10 feet from their lot line is going to be looking at like a 40-foot wall. 
And that's a whole lot different than looking at um, a, 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 what he's looking at now. And I, you know, he's the one who's going to be most impacted. So I just want to, you know, give you guys the full impact of that. We're asking for variance on his side. Okay. So if if right, that's who the variance right. is going to be, right? Just and to clarify, so, though, did, did he ask you to speak for him? Are no, I, I'm him looking. Just, I'm going to be looking at this. Okay, I just so, want to make sure that no, no, that he no. He wrote his own letter, but okay. I just want he's in, but he's not here pointing things out, and so I just want to point things out Thank because you. that's all part of it. And his house value was all tied into all of our house values, and you know, so I'm. But you're doing great. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm just concerned about how imposing the house is going to be. I'm not even sure if you guys really can imagine because we don't have any illustration of the house with the two houses sitting next to them. You know, we don't have an actual grade in the house right next to it so you can get an idea of what that might look like. And, um, and I just feel like it's, it's going to cause undue hardship to that neighbor and I can't help but feel that, you know, the, for that neighbor. And I just think if that was me, that I wouldn't be, I would be devastated. And, um, and I looked at the, like I said, I looked at the, the plans of the home and it looks very attractive, but we don't have a picture of what it will actually look sitting on that land with, with the three houses side by side. And especially with that cape, it's, I, I, I just, I wish that we actually had that illustration so that we could get an idea for what it was going to look like. Um, so in the neighborhood, as Zach spoke, we have done dormers or additions in the back to conform with the neighborhood. I did a dormer in the back of my house and I had to, I had to conform with the variance and only one corner of my house was part of that variance but I had to comply with that. And I didn't go before the planning board because they have a variance for a reason and I couldn't prove that I had to have it. You know, and so I'm like, okay, you know, I wasn't very happy because it cost the same amount of money to build a house with a smaller dormer than it, cost, than it would have cost me to build the whole thing. But that is how it is. And like I said, the other people in the neighborhood who have done um, additions have done like an L off the back of their house. Um, let's see, I, I just don't understand that just a few short months ago they bought this ranch house and it sat on a narrow lot in a little neighborhood just feet from the neighbors. I feel that they knew what they were getting and um, asking for a variance in approval of this house plan is an undue hardship to the nearest neighbors. As for me, this house is going to look like they moved my condo complex and put it on a little hill squeezed between two houses right across from my house. It's not exactly a hardship for me. It won't block my sun or be right outside my bedroom window or decrease the value of my home. But like a large person in a child's chair, I'm, I'm going to notice every day that it doesn't fit, that, it tower, that its towering size overshadows the neighborhood. I am asking the zoning board not to grant the variance. I would like to ask my neighbors to find an alternative plan that would allow them to use the back of their house for the expansion that they would like to build. And the other thing I, I want to just comment on, I mentioned uh, up to 21 Church Street, the lots are really narrow. Further down the street, as it goes down the hill and down the street, the lots are bigger. So they, they go to um, split levels and ranches and at the very end of the street where it sits, kind of, they sit kind of kitty corner and they're away from the road, there are two houses that are two full stories. Thanks. They may, they may have some questions. Oh, okay. Questions? Not right now, you're okay. So I, right now they're okay, but... Yeah, they're okay. I want to make about it. Uh, anybody else like to speak? Okay, we've no phone calls, but I do have some others. And we'll address them <coughs> Robert Stone to begin with. Uh, my name is Robert Stone and I reside at 21 Church Street. I am writing in regards to the request for a variance at 19 Church Street. I have lived in my house on this dead end street for 46 years. The house next to me is 20 feet away 
foundation to foundation, and 10 feet lot line to lot line. We're the only houses on the street this close together, as all other houses have a driveway between the houses. In our case, they built a double garage under the ranch, elevating the ranch. So even though I have a cape, my roof line is only slightly higher than the ranch house. Now I have been informed that the neighbor wants to build a, my, a wall 20 feet from my house that is a height of 35 feet mid-roof line. Just imagine if, I, if you were living in a little neighborhood of modest homes and suddenly you're going to have a building that is great, to, is going to dwarf your home, cut off all this afternoon sun, and severely affect the value of my home. To say that I find this upsetting would be an understatement. Because the ranch has a garage underneath the, underneath the visual size of the home is going to be enormous. It seems that an alternative construction could be devised using the backyard space that would create a less imposing home and give my new, my new neighbors the space they seek. It seems that they knew when they bought the home just months ago that they were on a small lot in a small neighborhood and if they had wanted a large house they had, could have found a place with bigger lot sizes. I have a small sunroom off the back of my house and had to adhere to the easement as have several neighbors so at least at the very least I do not want to grant them this variance. I feel strongly that it is not in keeping with the neighborhood and will impact me in a negative way. Please consider how you would feel if this was you. Most homes have a living room bigger than 20 feet, so at the end of my house, they're asking me if it is okay to build a wall 20 feet away from, 20 away, 20 feet away, 40 something feet high, and I don't know anyone in Scarborough who would think that was something they would want. I ask that you strongly consider my statement and drive down Church Street and look for yourselves. I'm asking that this letter be read into the meeting February 8th. I cannot attend due to age and health. I do not want my absence to be in any way considered a lack of concern or acceptance. Robert Stone, 18 Church Street. That was received January 31st. The next letter is uh, from uh, Dwayne and Marion O'Rourke, owners of 20, 22, and 24 Church Street. Uh, sirs, we are writing this as notice of opposition to the proposed home addition of Mr. Guillet, uh at 19 Church Street. The side setback of 15 feet is totally dis being disregarded on the south side, southeast side of his lot. It has always been my understanding that houses should conform to the neighborhood. However, perhaps that has changed. The height of the addition appears to be the greatest issue to the surrounding neighbors. Being that Mr. Gates, uh, I'm sorry, struggling with your name and I apologize. Giddy. Giddy's lot is uh, approximately 15,000 square, uh, square feet. We see no reason he could not put an addition to the rear of the house. His children are in their early teens or thereabouts. Uh, therefore, playing in the backyard doesn't seem to be a hardship as most of the children on the street play in the street and driveways. We understand that when you purchase a home, changes may be desired and necessary. However, perhaps purchasing one with a larger lot that already has two stories would have seemed, uh, have seemed this family's better needs. Once again, we wish to go on record as disapproving said construction. Very truly yours, Dwayne and Marianne O'Rourke. And um, that's it. Okay. So those are the only things. Anybody else wish to speak to this issue? Uh, it's 18. Oh, you know what it is? Yeah, it's 21 Church Street and 18. Okay, thank you for the correction. So on the letter, <laughs> on the letter it says 18, 18 church, it should at the say bottom, 21. 21 at the top. So, yeah, good, thank you. Okay, so we'll come back to uh, anybody else wishing to speak on this issue. Seeing none, I'm going to close the public part of the meeting. We we'll come back to the board for discussion, questions of the applicant, or any of the comments from the questions, or from the, the uh, board enforcement officer. I'm kind of struggling with both number three and four. <clears throat> I have a question. Uh, the existing house when it was first originally purchased, was it a two-bedroom or a three-bedroom home? Sorry, I didn't find that in here. 
If you could do me a favor, if you would, yeah, I can't be heard on the microphone, so please uh, take the microphone. Thank you. We just need to have it on the record. A three-bedroom home. It was a three-bedroom when you originally purchased it. Okay, thank you. The the one bedroom that my son is in is. I had to put a bunk bed in it to fit all his dressers and uh, stuff in it. So he has a loft. You may just want to stay up in case they have some sure. other questions. And um, Mr. Stark, you had a question on, I'm sorry, number? Yeah, I'm just struggling with three and four. Let me take this over for a second. Okay. Three is due to the physical features of the lot and or the location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new constru structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. That's number three. And number four, that Mr. Stark is talking about the impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impact and effects of building a structure which conforms to the yard size requirements. And so I, and I, I don't see how either one of those is, uh, is in compliance here. It, it, Clearly, he has plenty of room in the backyard to, to build. And on as, as far as the uh, uh, impacts on the on the neighborhood, and I just don't see that it fits with the neighborhood since there are no other uh, colonials or two stories in that immediate neighborhood. <coughs> Anybody else wish to speak on this issue? So the the reason for going up instead of out, you had indicated that the, your children and the dog and and it, there is some space in the back, but if you build back further, there's uh, it's a, there's a wood line in the back, a shed, and a large tree right in the middle of the the, the lot. So it would um, cram that in there. But also, I've I've heard it several times that there's no colonials in the neighborhood, but I look out my back door and I see colonials every day. There's colonial there's three colonials right across in the back of it, you know, abutting my property and my neighbor's property, seventeen Church Street. So Are there any on your street? Like Dave said, there's a couple uh, at the very end that are raised ranches and a colonial. Two houses down, I don't know what his number is, um be on the other side of uh Bob Stone, he's got a a pretty large house um, there. It's not. A, it's not a ranch. Okay. Um, so, looking at the plot plan, um, you said two houses down. Would that be plot S? Plot yeah. F? Yes. Yes. And that's a two-story colonial. You said. I didn't say it was a two-story colonial. It has been either. It's. It's an odd-shaped house. So it's not okay. a. It's not a ranch. It's not a raised ranch. It's. It's a larger house. It's been built on <coughs> three three-car garage and. Yeah. If you'd like to, it's, we'll let you. Uh, I thought it was close to the public at this point, but it's. Uh, we're going to allow com some conversation as we go through. Okay, it, that's issues. fine. I'm just trying to sit down, uh, Ms. Emery. If you want to just, but we'll go ahead. We, we'll. Uh, we want to get the right answers here. Sure. And so it requires a little bit of flexibility and common sense. But go ahead. That's that's why you've got the microphone now and why we're letting. You. And I'm going to ask a couple of questions about. Absolutely. About. Uh, what I'm trying to do is get to motive and and uh, understanding the logic of going up versus, I mean, one is obviously it's probably less expensive to go up than to go out, which I'm, I'm sure is a factor because I yeah. just I just went out, so I know what that's like. Um, uh, the ha Have you looked at uh, values and whether or not you'll get dollar amount back for your property by doing that? Have you done any studies on what you get for a return on your investment? Uh, we're currently going through that process with with our uh, loan officer okay. in the builder. Okay. I don't have a, a final evaluation of that today. Okay. Um, but to your point about going back, we did look at that, and it was pricier, and um, you know it would have been a lot of earth moving uh, to put a a footer, to put the footers in, and the, um, it seemed. To be an easier task to go up. 
And if I could, I'd like to address, there was a common theme about, amongst all the, the notes and letters. Um, and first, I'd like to say I appreciate everybody's input, not upset about it at all, so I appreciate you guys communicating that. Um, one of the, the big things was, why did we buy this place if, you know, we wish to have a colonial or more space? And, you know, not that it's anybody's business, but uh, that's what our financial situation was at that time, which was if we could find a place in Scarborough, a very challenging place to purchase a home, um, then we could, you know, look at building once we had that property. And, and 19 Church Street, at the time that we purchased it, seemed like a, a, vi a very viable option for that. And that's the only reason why we didn't just buy a, a colonial. Was it, you know, came down to our personal situation, which is really... <laughs> Shouldn't shouldn't be part of. It is. And so, thank you for being kind enough to explain that. Um, so, what we have to do is meet the requirements sure. per the regulations. One of the challenges that Mr. Stark brings up is, is uh, the issue regarding the physical features of the lot, the location of the existing structures on the lot. Would it be practical to construct a proposed expansion, enlargement, or uh, new construction uh, structure? In conformance with the uh, currently applicable yard size requirements, the challenge, of course, by uh, I don't I'm assuming that's I think that's sewered there, isn't it? I know it's what that's all sewered there, mm -hmm. and it's sewered down the front, right? So uh, one of the challenges, of course, is you've got about 46 feet of maybe not that much, 45 feet of width that you can go back, you know, like with an L or whatever, and meet the requirements. Um, the, the, the ordinance doesn't talk about cost or define whether or not it's financially reasonable or unreasonable unless there's a circumstance that creates that. The other challenge with this uh, section of the code is it's actually a subsection of a variance appeal, which is a, a variance appeal is a very strict appeal that, that you wouldn't be able to get through in this situation. Right. But this gives you the ability to have that op opportunity, but it is the second hardest appeal to get. Is that the, can I ask a question there? Is that the one where if it's less than 10 feet from the property line? Uh, no, it's a variety of reasons that will hit it, but uh, because of the circumstances here that the town felt this was the best way to go as opposed to a uh, limited reduction of the yard size. No, this is limited. Is this limited. strictly limited reaction? I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I stand corrected. Um, thank you. So. Number three is a, is a concern. I, I don't disagree. The impact in enlargement, expansion, of new building structure on the existing use of the neighborhood will be not be substantially different from a greater than the impacts and effects of a building and structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. That one there, I'm, I'm not as uptight about or as concerned about because I think it's still a home. Um, um, we haven't started, so the the issues to me come down to being. And correct me. If, if and I know you guys will. Number one seems to be met. It's pretty straightforward. Um, the property was built prior to 1991, whether it's 1976 or 64 is irrelevant. The actual reduction in the, uh, is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. This is a three bedroom home, uh, 46 by 26, I think. Um, <coughs> I do not know what the rest of the home sizes are down there. I'm assuming they're pretty similar. And uh, the third is the, the start comment, and number four. So, back to the board for questions or, uh, or comments. I, I tend to I agree with Mr. Stark. Um, my challenge is there are other options. I, I don't know if you had an opportunity to talk with the neighbors prior to coming before the board. Did you have that opportunity? I, I've talked to, um, I don't know if I talked to Pat, but I've, I've talked to the Barretts a little bit, not necessarily okay. about how they feel about it, but that we were thinking about it. I've talked to Stone, uh, Bob Stone as well. Have you, have you thought at all about Seeing if there's a compromise between the groups, that is, have you, did you look at that at all, or did anybody look at that or discuss 
other than the two extremes, one is building out back or the other building up it's the style that you have? Um, no, I didn't, I didn't uh, get everybody's approval in the neighborhood before proceeding down this route and part of that is not required is my naiveness to the entire process to be honest with you this is my first time okay. doing this so and, yeah. and our job is just trying to help coach, coach you through it we, when we can get a, a good answer we want one obviously uh, other board members comments comments i have a question yes um are you are you aware of any in regards to Number three, with the physical features of the lot, are you aware of any existing, I guess, natural barriers or boundaries that would prevent you from building outward instead of upward, like a high water table, or if there's a high flood risk, or there's a lot of water in your backyard? Well, one of the things in the backyard that is a concern is that the old leach field from when it was on uh, septic, and not when it was on, uh, <coughs> yeah, septic, right, septic system, mm -hmm. that was filled in in the back you can see the kind of the mound in the backyard where that would be of concern that would have to be removed and addressed as it, I think it was just filled in or based on the contour of the backyard you can see where it's kind of been filled in so that was a little bit of a concern and again the footers going back there would be a lot of, of earth moving and because like uh, uh, Zach Barrett mentioned when he was up here there's not a lot of room between our houses that would be the only access to get back there to to do that type of work so that would have been uh, a bear to undertake sure going through there are you on public water and public sewer now we are okay public water public sewer now yeah. so the so I guess one of the I guess I'm just trying to think of natural is really the natural concern but um, the existing leach field that was a, for the prior owners of the home before public sewer came in there is that uh, close proximity to the rear side of the house. Yeah, it's it's probably <coughs> is it eight, like a ten feet, twenty feet, fifteen feet, somewhere in the neighborhood of fifteen. Okay, fifteen to twenty feet is into that leach hill, and that would have to be dug up and removed in order to expand. I would as, I would assume, uh, you know, we didn't go very far with plans in that direction, um, sure. but I would assume that there's once you start putting in. I don't know how how deep footers have to go. I'm not a civil engineer, I'm a chemical engineer, but uh I assume that depending on whether or not you put a crawl space or a full basement, you're sure. talking about a significant amount of entry into that. Did the builder uh, look at any designs or the designer look at any designs that would be in compliance with the current for, uh requirements of the code? Uh we did talk about just um redesigning the second story with five and a half less feet which would be with within the uh, the code and um, we did not spend the the money on plans for that because we wanted to come to the uh, this meeting first you know we've already spent you know over two thousand dollars on on things to, to just get on. to this point so we wanted to make sure that you know if we were going to have to go that route that 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 came in sequence to your your response to. Okay. Well, here's what I'd like to do is I'd like to uh, go through each one of these questions with the board. Uh, Ms. Emery, you wanted to say something if you want. Yeah, yeah I, I just was going to comment on that other garage. <laughs> so on the other side of Bob Stone is a small ranch. Are you referring to Lot C? Uh, lot S, excuse me. The two houses over? I'm referring to what is probably 23 Church Street. They have two lots. One is the garage and one is the house. Okay. Next to the... So So they have a, a um, south, three... South. 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 You're going... Um, going yeah. Direction. And okay. so they have two lots, and on one of the lots is this big three-car garage with a big slanted roof and two um, skylights. And then a the original small ranch next to it, and uh, so it is it is big in size, but it sits on its own lot. And they did that slanted roof in um, kind of I think it was in compliance to the character of the neighborhood and not having because it it is expanded in the back, right? It's, I don't know how to describe it. It's big yeah. in the back, 
Uh, but the, the front of it has a slanted roof, so it appears to be just one story as you look at it from the road. Okay. But, you know, I, I just thought I'd throw that in and let you, let, let you know because it is big, <coughs> but it has its own lot. Okay. Yeah. So I'd like to just go back uh, to the board and uh, why don't we go through each one of these items and we'll make this as part of the public record as we go through it. Um, I'm going to save number three for last uh, because I think that's the most challenging one. Um, <coughs> the existing buildings or structure on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size uh, is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, while the lot is a vacant, non-conforming lot of record. And why don't we start right down, please. We'll go right up one. Um, yeah, we've heard two different years of bill, but both of them well with, before the 1990 deadline, so I don't see any problem with that at all. Yeah, clearly, it's it's, uh, it's prior to 91, easily. Maybe we can kind of all check this off as yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. The parcel, Mr. Chairman, the parcel report said 1968. 1968. Okay. <coughs> Take the average. <laughs> <laughs> we are 85. <laughs> Three days. <laughs> Throwing it out there. All right. The requested uh, reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or the occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Uh, we'll start right now with you again. Uh, yeah, I would agree. It's a three family home. I mean, they're not looking to change it to a fixer. Any more family? I mean, three bedroom. Sorry. Yeah, I'm in agreement with that. Uh, it's, I mean, we all we all have things that we want to have uh, in, uh, a certain number of bedrooms, bathrooms. So that's just uh, what, what what we all the way we all like to live. So I'm in agreement with that. I'm also in agreement with number two. Um, my feeling is what they're asking for isn't. Um, it isn't in the realm of uh, something that's ridiculous. So I, I agree with number two. I have a tough time with number two. It says requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner to owner or occupant to use the property. No, but they can use the property the way it is now. They can use the property with a different type of uh, expansion. They don't have to have a limited reduction in yard size. Why well, apologize? Uh, I, uh, Mr. Blaze, I'm kind of on the same side as you on that issue. I, I don't I'm trying to find it. I don't see it. I know, I know I'm walking over it each time, but I don't see the current layout of the inside of the home. Am I missing that? Yeah, that's in there. Construction. Oh, the I think the the current layout would be your first floor plan. Basically, I don't think you're changing the first floor a lot, are you? Yeah. I think one of the challenges with that question is it's, uh, is the 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 reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. It's a three-bedroom house that's really, you know, my guess is a lot of the houses down there are only two bedrooms. I don't know that, but I mean, a three-bedroom house in that neighborhood. I know that neighborhood pretty well. It's one of the older neighbors at Skyro. It's been fairly stable there for a long time. So I have a challenge with that. I'm not going to commit one way or the other on it, but I, I understand where this place is coming from on that. Uh, number four, the impacts and effects <coughs> of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from a greater than the impacts and effects of the building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. And we'll Did you skip three? I skipped three as I... Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. said you were going to skip it. You usually miss one. That's why I was going. <laughs> <laughs> I will on the next one. <laughs> well, I mean, there's already been discussion on that, and I would think I'd have a little bit of a problem with this as well, just based on upon what I've been hearing from others. I don't know if it actually meets that. What, what would be your concerns? Well, 
about the concerns. I, I, I was trying to see if Mr. Longstaff could bring them up. It was hard to really see, like the other properties <coughs> down there. I know we couldn't really see too much, but it's been brought up that people have concerns, and, and I'd like to kind of see what it is like down there and see if we are looking at something that's going to be substantially different. Mr. Stock, while we're waiting, see if uh, my uh, my real concern is not the valuation of the properties because I I don't believe that building this new structure would reduce the values of those properties, uh, but I do believe that it'll change the feel of the neighborhood. Uh, uh, clearly, clearly for Mr. Stone, uh, now even with the five foot setback, it would be it would affect him, but it, not nearly as much because instead of having that wall going straight up right next to him, it would at least set it back, and it would reduce his property value. Uh, his would be the one property that I, I do believe that it would be adversely affected. I tend to agree with Mr. Stark in that uh, I see less of an issue with number four. Um, that I understand that. Uh, the houses surrounding are um, smaller in comparison to what is proposed here, but there are other uh, larger houses at the end of the street, and as Mr. Giddy had uh, indicated, behind the house. And uh, behind him, that is not on Church Street, so I, I have a hard time uh, finding a reason to overtly disagree with number four, so I, I feel like he's met that requirement. Um, I look at question number four in two different ways. One is that we heard a whole bunch of neighbors stand up and say uh, they don't like the looks of the place, it's out of character, it's too big, everything like that. Um, if I look at it that way, I have to say, you know, this this doesn't conform. But if you take a look at question number four, it says the impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood. Um, existing uses in the neighborhood are homes. Uh, this person is merely wanting to enlarge the home, so. If I take a look at it in that way, I, I agree with it. It's funny, you and I are on a roll. I, I looked at it the same way. I think that number four, in my opinion, is met because of the fact that it's, um, it, it isn't going to be substantially different use. It's not going to be a fraternity house. It's not going to be no. bed and breakfast. It's just going to be a little bit larger house. So I think number four, personally, I, I see where you're coming from. Now. Uh, number five is simple, it, uh, you haven't started construction. So we come to number three. <coughs> uh, due to the physical features of the lot and or the location of the existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct and pr pr the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the cr currently applicable yard size requirements. And if you'd like to go at it, I'll go down that way again. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't heard anything that would make it impractical. Uh, I know the question was raised about where the leach field is, and if it's at 15 feet back, I mean, you can still get another bedroom in there, and you could probably get another bath in there. And essentially, that's looking at the plan. I mean, it's got four bedrooms, but you'd still have the three bedrooms that's been before, and you could still get two baths in there. So I think you could practically do it with an alternative. I, I don't see anything vastly imposing that. So your position on that, just to get a clarification, is that you don't believe number three is met? No, I don't. Okay. Uh, Mr. Stark? I, it, it seems that when we have these same situations um, in, in other appeals that we require the applicants to, to explore all of their options. And, uh, and I know sometimes that is costly to have, have uh, engineers maybe look at it, have, it, have your builders look at it and give you some ideas, but I don't believe that those options have been clearly vetted out and made, make, make sure that, 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 that there isn't a good feasible option there. So no, I don't believe that that one has been met. 
according to the plot plan, there's a stockade fence. There's a fence on each side of the house. Is that correct? Mr. Longstaff. Excuse me. Sorry. On the uh, on the plot plan, there's a, there's a fence on each side of the house, uh, surrounding the house, the entire lot. Um, again, my my only concern for this would be the the proximity of the leach field to the home. Uh, obviously, there is there is no leach field. Okay. There is no leach field. There's no leach field. There may be an old leach field that's buried there. That's really not a constraint. Okay. And I, and I understand. Um, on this, I'm still uh, making up my mind on number three, so I just I don't have an opinion or a, or a yes or no on this at this time. Okay. Um, I don't think that they've taken a look at other options. They just wanted to take the house and put another story on top of it, and I, and I can understand that. It's the prerogative to try to do that. But it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, by having to come and get a limited reduction in yard size, you don't have to expand that house uh, and get a limited reduction in yard size. There are other alternatives, and I just don't believe that they've been explored at this point in time. Okay. Uh, my challenge with number three is is a, trying to get a handle on consistency. So when I look at consistency, I look at what we've done in the past, and most of these have come through uh, on. There's a good shot of the neighborhood. Yeah, it's definitely um, showing. There's a lot of one and a half story homes there. So, I think we can refute the fact that they're all ranch houses. They're not. Yeah, they're either same. Right. A lot of a lot of ranch houses on Mr. Giddy's uh, side of the street, but right across Is that the street. Mr. Giddy's right there. Yes, the red home. Okay. That's, Thanks. That's Mr. Is there Giddy's. a way to get in front of that? And yes, I've been in front of it about 15 <laughs> times, but you don't pay any attention to what I'm doing. <laughs> I've been there like 20 times tonight. Oh, could you go a little left? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want a different angle from the top? Is that house in back? That that's that shows back the street. Split. Excuse me. Is that? House and back on another street. Yeah. Okay. What house and back? One right directly. Right here? Yeah. That's right beside him. No, the one to the right. I think. And the one, that's Mr. Um, Barrett. Barrett's. Okay. We're not it looks like here. that one's fairly close on this side. This one is? Yeah. yeah. This that's is fairly close, yes. Yeah. Yep. And that looks like, doesn't look like it's one story. I think, the, I think one of the points... Uh, and it's neither for nor against, it's just a, a comment, is that but for the five-foot variance for the limited reduction of yard size, if he were, if this whole house was another basically six feet towards Mr. Barrett's house, he would be meeting setbacks and could build, as, you know, he could build a colonial if he wanted to, because mm -hmm. there's no design standards for any neighborhood, unfortunately. Well, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on which side of the coin you're on. But I just want to point out, six feet this way, he can go up 30, 35 feet. He could still do Right. Well, he, yes, he could, but it's a little more difficult now uh, structurally to do that. It's not impossible by any means. It's just structurally. it's And aesthetically, it probably would look... I don't know. Maybe it would look worse. Maybe it would look better. I don't know than, than what he's proposing. I just wanted to point out that six feet is all we're talking about, and we wouldn't even be in this room talking about this. Okay? So just keep that in mind. So I come back to my, my, my thoughts about consistency. Usually we see these on neighborhoods that don't have any lot size at all. There's no place to put it. So when they have no place to build anything, the rationale for being able to allow them to stay in the footprint, which is normally my typical position, uh, is is pretty easy to justify because they're staying in the footprint, they're going up, there's no other choice. And so number three is, is pretty much easily met in most cases, especially in the, in the beach areas. Um, I must be candid, and I, I struggle with that one to the point where I probably don't support that item, number three. So here's what we'll do next. We've gone through, and does anybody on the board wish to challenge another board member's 
thought process or uh, discuss a different table. Again, yeah, some of us are, are still questioning. The way this works, so everybody knows, is we go back and forth on this. The end result is if you get three votes that are yes, it passes. If you get three votes that are no, it fails. So any one of us could disagree on any one of these items, but doesn't mean that they're going to vote yes or no at the end part of the equation. Okay? So it can be a little bit muddy, and I want to make sure that we give everybody here the opportunity to have um, have this thought out as, as, as rationally as possible. And it's obviously an important issue for everybody, and we respect that. Mr. Chair, just on that, if say some of us don't agree with two and some of us don't agree with three or four, if we vote no on any of them, it's a no vote overall. Uh, you can make that call at the end. Of the day. I'm not, I can't tell you that. You're, you're supposed to make the decision based on what you believe. You could say it's not met, but not met enough to the, not to the point, the degree that you feel it, it jeopardizes the entire project. You've got to be able to look at each one of these. Now, I'll just read the top. The applicant for the limited reduction of yard size must demonstrate the following. Please explain how your situation meets the, the criteria listed below. It doesn't say that in your conscience you may say, I don't have a I have a problem with this, but not to the degree of eliminating it. It says it must demonstrate the following. So, it. so in normal circumstances, if you disagree with one of them, you would more than likely say, I disagree with the entire pa package. And you can, and most of the time, it's very black and white, so it's easy. I don't agree with three, it ends the discussion. And usually all of us are on the same page. But as you've noticed, all of us have different issues on different items, which is rare. So you could have an uncomfortable feeling where you'd say, well, I know I said that and you said that, that you're uncomfortable with it. I'm not sure I'm to the point where I'm willing to say it doesn't need it. It's your call. As to, at the end of the day, it's your vote. And your vote's the only one that matters. And how you make that decision is up to you. Uh, I'm trying to be as consistent as I can with the history of the board and my past voting history. My concern is simple. There are other alternatives that haven't been explored. And for me, that is the defining mark. And, and we have obvious objections in the neighborhood, which does apply to uh, the, the um, uh, impacts expansion of the building structure existing in the neighborhood be substantially different from. And it also comes back to, is it reasonably necessary to permit the owner occupant to, of the property to enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. The only way I can define that, in my opinion, in a circumstance when there's a disagreement, is what does the neighborhood feel about their neighborhood? Other, other than, that's easy as benchmark for me, and that's how I kind of gauge it. Some of them, the answers are, again, I come back to Higgins Beach, where everybody's going up and doing everything they can do to go up. It's hard to argue that number two is relevant given the fact that everybody is fighting for the same thing, eventually. In this neighborhood here, it's fairly stable. This is the first time I see this. It's a different criteria for me than I might have used in Higgins Beach. That's just me. Well, the re reasoning for my question was, is I don't know if this should be tabled, where there's at least three or four people that have a no on one of the items. Uh, the, the, re the reason for the tabling would need to be one that the applicant requests it to be provide additional information, or number two, the board feels they need more information to make a sound decision. So if there's a, there's more information, I haven't heard that request of the applicant. Um, I hinted at it with suggesting that he may want to work with his neighbors, uh, but to be candid with you, whatever he whatever we come up with the change would be substantial enough that it wouldn't preclude him from coming back before a year. Because the change would be, say for instance he comes back with a different design. The rule says that you can't come back with a similar design within a year if this has been declined. I can't see a circumstance where that if he went back with his neighbors and worked out an arrangement that was more suitable that it, would, that it wouldn't trigger the, that would be enough change because you've got your neighbors to agree with you. I would argue that's enough change to come back and bring another plan forward within a year. I'm, I'm not even looking for that. I'm looking for that all options have kind of been explored and it doesn't seem like they have been. And it may be more costly than the applicant wants to do, but 
And, and the I think that's the something that call is which we need to we need to take into consideration. It's a reasonable statement. I think the applicant has a right to, to ask for a table and to get some more information if he chooses, uh, or the board can also. But it needs to be for uh, reasons of clarity, not necessarily. You know, he doesn't have, if he hasn't done his homework and looked at other options. I don't consider that clarity. To me, that's uh, either lack of coaching or uh, the right representation or misunderstanding of the process. Um, and so that's ultimately on, on his contractor's responsibility, in my opinion. Again, I, I, I don't have any problem, as everybody here in this board knows, helping anybody work through an issue. Um, so uh, I'm always for that. Uh, but at this point, based on what I'm hearing from the neighborhood and based on what's presented before us, uh, unless the applicant chooses to table it, come back with another uh, sort of this. I, I don't see us voting no on this, precluding him from coming back in two months, unless the board disagrees with me there. And I think that's an important statement, because if you disagree with me there, then I think your point is much more uh, uh, important, because that would eliminate his right to come back in a year, uh, within a year. I just see any other change that comes back will be substantial enough to justify him coming back within a year. Whether we vote no, yes. And that's kind of my position on why I would suggest that we move forward. But this is the board. I'm only the I'm only the orchestra. It's, it's your call as to how we move forward. No, I, I would agree. I think we should need to go through each each of the questions and uh, have an up or down vote on on each one. I don't know if that wouldn't if we did in if we did in the end vote no, that wouldn't preclude him from coming right. back as Mr. All that all that would preclude him from doing is coming back with the same proposal. Right. He could he could come he could have his own uh, he could have a redesign that abides by all the ordinances and not have to come back at all. At, if we right. vote exactly. He so could do that, or he could come back with a substantially modified version that may, perhaps looks like a cape, like across the street from him. Right. I don't know if that works for him or not, but that that would be one where he could come back. It's not the same proposal. Uh, or he could do an expansion that does meet all the setbacks <coughs> and doesn't require board approval at all. Um, might be a backwards salt box. Yeah. It might be a variety of ways. Or he could involved. wait a year and come back with the same provo proposal, hoping his neighbors have all moved and the board has <laughs> all changed. <laughs> <laughs> the board changing is a higher likelihood than the neighborhood moving. Um, so, in any event, that's kind of where we're at. I, uh, do you understand what's going on here? with what's happening, I mean, uh, you probably get sensing that the vibe is negative, at least in my chair, but I want you to know what your options are, what your rights are. Also, the neighbors have rights. And ultimately, at the end of the day, we're responsible to meeting the, the regulations. Um, so does your concern about him being able to come back? That was, that was my concern. That was, if it was a no vote, that normally people can't come back, but if they can come back, that's I, I would state as however this plays out, if it, it, let me rephrase that. I would ask that if this plays out as a negative, that uh, that uh, it, notwithstanding that, they're allowed to come back with a plan that is, even if it's moderately changed and the neighborhood is comfortable with it, I have no problem with that. And it may not even be something that needs to come back to us as Mr. Longstaff said. Right. So why don't we start with, one is obvious, number two, I'm just going to write down, this will be fine as a fact. The uh, requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property <laughs> in essentially the same manner as other similar properties utilized in the zoning district. And would you like me to go the other way, or you go get this way? Yeah, you can go the other way. Okay. <laughs> How do we come back from you? No. <coughs> no, and, and could you state the reason why, please? Pardon? Could you state your reason why, please? Because he doesn't need a... Uh, he doesn't need a variance to, to use his home like other homes in the neighborhood. Okay. He bought the home. He's living in the home. He just wants to expand it. So. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I, I would say yes um, for the fact that uh, my finding of facts from my perspective um, Again, I see stated building in such a way would allow the space needed to occupy the property. From a ranch to a colonial, from what I've seen, 
it is similar to other houses in the neighborhood. Maybe not his direct neighbors, his or her direct neighbors, but um, other houses in the area. So I would vote yes on that. Okay. I, I would vote yes on that. Uh, my my feelings are similar to Mr. Hebert in that I read it differently than Mr. Blaze does. And, and the way that I read it is that um, uh, maybe their needs are, are different than people across the street from them. Maybe they, they need more space because of the family. And so, so no, I, I would, I would, I'm okay with number two. Well, Mr. Chair, Mr. Blaze, you, that's why I wanted the guys to go that way because I'm kind of thinking a little bit in what you folks are saying on this, so I'm kind of in the middle on that one. I really don't have a yes or no at this point. So. Okay. Uh, my position on it is, is more with the theory that, uh, and, and these are the words I'm using, so you know where it's coming from. The request of re reduction is reasonably necessary, reasonably necessary to permit the owner or the occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. And I would argue expanding, doubling the size is not similar property anymore. So I would be I would be in a negative for number two. And that's why I'm kind of leaning that way as well. I would say no. So at this point on number two, all in favor that number two is met. It's two. Opposed? Three. Due to the physical features of the lot and all the location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the con currently applicable yard size requirements. Mr. Blaze, will you run with the ball? Uh, I vote no on that primarily because I don't think uh, other alternatives were investigated fully. We're talking about five point five and a half feet. Um, if it were back, it wouldn't wouldn't even be an issue. Unfortunately, I, uh, based on the lettering of this uh, um, of this form, I will have to vote no as well. It's because there are other possibilities that could be done. Okay. And, and I also would be no. And, and again, uh, like like Mr. Blaze had said. Uh, I, I don't think we know the answer to whether it would be feasible or not. I have to believe that it's been explored uh, to the to this limit that it needs to be. I I would be a no on this as well because I just don't have enough information saying that there is anything permitting them or preventing them from going back. I mean I know what they want to do. Going up is obviously easier, but I don't I haven't heard anything so far tonight that tells me that there's something permitting them from exploring other options. Uh, this one here is the one that's probably the easiest for me because of the plot thought process I use in Higgins Beach. I'm a no on this because there are other op options. And we have been very firm in the Higgins Beach area, although this is a conforming lot, which makes it different. So there is a difference here, because this is a conforming lot as opposed to a non-conforming lot. But that makes it actually the argument easier to justify the fact that there are other options which just kind of supports my position on this. So all in favor of number three being met. <coughs> Opposed? It's five. The impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of the building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirements. Mr. Blaze again? Upon how I want to look at it. <laughs> I said before, I mean, if I'm looking at it from uh, the neighbor's point of view, I have to say no on that. Um, but if I if I look at it from from his point of view and he wants to expand his house, uh, he certainly has the option of expanding his house. I'll have to say yes on that. I would agree yes as well. Um, again, basing my opinion objectively as possible based on not necessarily the houses in direct proximity to this property, but also in the surrounding general area. 
Well, while I don't believe that the effects would be substantial to most property owners down there, I do believe that the property next to them, uh, Mr. Stone, would be uh, uh, financially impacted in it, so I would be a no on this. I see this as being substantially different. When Mr. Longstaff went down and showed us the views of all the houses, I didn't really see any houses that had a built-in garage down below and also went up above all the other houses. I mean, yes, there were other houses that had two stories or were higher, but I didn't really see anything that was going to look similar to this going down through at all. I think that home is just at the peak of the hill, if I, just as it goes down, if I remember correctly. Is that fair? I think so. So your position on that is? I would vote no on that because I think it is substantially different. And the impact of the effects of the enlargement, expansion, and new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of building or structure which conforms to the art size requirements. I would vote that that isn't so in favor of number four. All opposed? Two. Okay. Number five is they have not started construction. So do I have a motion uh, for uh, well, do you want me to present a motion? Maybe. I think we need to take an overall vote. That would be the next step oh. is for the motion. So do, do I have a motion on the I'll make a motion to approve the uh, uh, appeal as presented. Okay. Any, uh, I'll, I'll move to vote on, a, on approval. Okay. So we've got a second. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none. So based on the information provided, based on the information from the neighbors before the, uh, the applicant's information and uh, our collective experience, uh, all in favor of uh, appeal number, let me sure I get it right, 2597, uh, say yes, or hands up, all opposed, it's unanimous now. I'm sorry, it's not passed. However, uh, one of the codicils we did put in here is if you feel like you'd like to work with neighbors and other options, that doesn't preclude you from not coming back within any reasonable time frame. Okay. Sorry it didn't work out the way you'd like. Thank you. Next appeal is appeal number 2598, practical difficulty request by Kenneth and Heidi Foreman Smith, 6 9th Street. So this is map U23, parcel 63. And Representative, uh, if you could state your name and address, that would be great. Yes, my name is uh, Ken Smith, and this is my wife, Heidi. Okay, Smith. Very good. If you'd like to just give us an overview of what you'd like to accomplish, we'll go from there. Yes, um, and, and thank you for the opportunity to. Um, present this, this request. Um, we're here because um, you tap on it when you you hit it pretty hard now. No? Um, do I need the microphone? Mm -hmm. You can just pull that over, yeah? Yeah. Let's 
Well, anyway, um, the reason we're here is um, we purchased this house back in 2003, um, and with the house came the shed, um, which was uh, in apparently a bunk house in the past with plumbing and utilities and, and even um, a furnace. Um, we believe it's over 70 years old. Uh, this is a very old house in the neighborhood with a lot of character, but, um, and, and we've been making a number of improvements on the property, uh, including a new kitchen, a new roof, and, and a lot of other enhancements. But what's happening is, is the main portion of this shed here is se settling relative to the side attachment. And then this is just a rear view. So you can see, you know, um, it, it's a peaked structure with a, um, a little addition that comes off to the side here. And so that's, that's the front elevation as it exists now. And it is sinking significantly, so much so that we had to kind of cut this door down in order just to open it. And we, we don't use it as a bunkhouse or don't use any of the, um, the heat um, or anything or the toilet or, or shower or anything, but um, we do use it for storage. It's a very small lot and we need storage for, you know, our, our equipment, lawn mowers, tools, things of, of that nature. So that's, that's the current use, and that's how we would like to continue to use it. Um, and then what you can see here is just the other elevations as it exists today. So this is the side elevation on, on Moe's yard here. Um, and then this is the other side elevation um, in our backyard. So the structure is basically The current structure is this, and our proposal is to rebuild it as opposed to try to um, repair it in place. And and so part of part of the the challenges that we face is that it would require um, relatively significant structural remediation. Um, with a proper foundation um, to make it, uh, to, to fix it so that it's not settling and, and to also uh, bring it up to code if it were in place. Uh, we, we, we have had an assessment by a structural engineer as, as per Brian's recommendation um, to, to determine kind of the, the status of the building and so forth. And what the structural engineer was able to de determine as to the report you have in the packet is that the building's certainly settling. Um, he, he wasn't able to definitely confirm, but there's likely rot underneath it on the four by four sills that currently sit on concrete masonry units. Um, and uh, in any case, in order to make it proper, if you will, we would want to have a foundation underneath it so that it sits properly on it and it isn't settling. The, the challenges uh, that we face, it's a very small lot, um, and we can't in any way move the, or, or rebuild the shed, uh, because every, all the open space we have is within the setbacks. This, this um, the current structure is on the edge of the property in the corner, such that there's about 1.3 inches off the side of our property line here and four inches here, and then it's about six inches on the back. So in order for us to try to rebuild this in place, it would require um, lifting the existing structure <coughs> to install a foundation underneath it. Um, and, and we feel that that would, would be very, very difficult, challenging, costly, um, to try to um, replace or rebuild the, the shed and bring it up to code. And, and, and all we really want here is a shed and, and we're, we're just trying to do what's right here. But the challenge is that it's within the setbacks of the property and there's no way of getting around that to rebuild it. 
if if we were to raise it it would require having to go into our abutters yards um, significantly with probably equipment and, and other uh, work crews etc to try to level it up um, and and build the foundation underneath it and and resettle it so that's kind of the challenge here um, two of the sides are on the abutters property the third side we really couldn't get equipment through because of this small area here so those are the challenges that we face um, you know the um, the assessment from the structural engineer was that in our his opinion um, it is cost prohibitive and a financial hardship to reinforce the existing superstructure in situ and install a properly designed foundation system beneath the existing superstructure as compared to reconstructing a properly designed foundation system and superstructure to match and that's from Joe Leisure, who's the principal of LNL Structural Engineering in, in South Portland. Um, so we, we really can't think of any way to get around um, repairing this. So it's it's um, it's not settling anymore, and it's still useful for us. And and what we're proposing here is uh, to build a new structure that's actually three feet smaller. Um, we would we would take three feet away from from the main building here but basically keep the same footprint um, here. And it, it, it's somewhat tight here, and I know Brian had mentioned concerns about or maybe an opportunity to try to improve the setbacks. Um, the challenge is if, if we push this building over, then it really encroaches on, on this corner here and the ability to get around here. And, and it, doesn't, um, it doesn't help. Um, entering the backyard and moving through there. So um, basically uh, what we're doing what we're trying to do is um, rebuild a structure to something that certainly will look much nicer. Um, it will be consistent with when we install new siding on the house to be much more appealing um, in in the neighborhood and in the area. Uh, for our abutters and properties and property value as well. Um, we're not breaking a precedent. Um, this, this uh, we included uh, 3 Bay Street, which basically tore down two structures that were within the setbacks and rebuilt them. Um, so we're not trying to really break precedent here. We're just trying to find a way to have a useful shed here for, for simple storage. Um, as per as per the um, as per the the design elements that are designed here, so uh, we did include what it would look like. This window is wrong; it wouldn't look that way. That doesn't that's not what we want. Um, but we change that so it would have to be um, horizontal. But in essence, um, the structure would be the same, except for it would be shorter on the front end by three feet. And then what we would do is where, where this kind of alcove area sticks out or whatever the right term is, um, that would be open so that we could store, you know, bicycles and, and um, boogie boards and things like that uh, as well. We did consult with an engineer and an architect to draw up a plan that is conforming with code for this. Um, and, and I think really pursued a lot of due diligence to make sure that we're trying in our best um, best spirit here to come up with a solution that will certainly be, be better that, than what's there now, um, won't be cost prohibitive, and, um, and really um, serve our needs and not, not cause undue um, stress on our abutters when we're trying to rebuild this. Or, or build it in place. So um, I didn't know whether the board wants me to review this document um, and, and if it has any questions uh, on the application at this point. We'll walk you through the process here as we go along. The, the good thing is you're just giving us an overview. 
and that's what we really need initially. Um, so long, Steph, anything to add on this? Um, no, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, you had asked me if there was a site plan. What we were you looking for? I was looking for um, like the house layout. If there's a, is there a shot? In the abutting property? Right. No, I don't have that. Okay. <coughs> um, I was just wondering, it looks like there's another building right beside it. I can certainly neighbors. exit street view here, and you can see what the neighborhood looks like, 69th Street. So you have a house on this side. You have an open yard on this side. Okay. Somebody see that? Is there? A, it looks like there's another garage or something from your neighbor on that side. Who is the neighbor on that side? Is that you, Mo? I, I I can't see where you're pointing. So if, if we're looking at the street here, the person on the left-hand side, who's who's on the yeah, side? That's, that's your. And uh, is that a is that a shed about the same distance? That's actually patty corner to us. In the that's on the lot. That's, that's on the, the next, next street, street behind us. Yeah. Okay, so there's nothing on your lot back in that area. Um, okay, it's off to the left. Okay. The other thing too is we would have to, if we were to rebuild it in place, we would have to take down a section of most fences basement. Which the current um, building as well as in the backyard that abutters piece of fence as well. Just you know, what what I said was if we were to rebuild it in place, we would have to remove a section of fence on the left side of the yard that runs to the shed and also a section of fence and these are are abutters fence fences um, on the back side of the lot that abuts with um, with the shed. Okay. Just a minor incon I mean an inconvenience for our, our <coughs> so I why don't we see a fence on the back side. Yeah. In the picture unless it's a yeah, there it is. Um, right there. Uh, you can't see it there but uh, right here is the back side fence, see? Mr. Chairman, might well, that's the back <coughs> of the shed, but there's a, a fence right here, is what I'm saying. So if we were oh, to okay. lift it up, we'd but have to no fence. Correct. Mm -hmm. Not as not gotcha. not totally against it. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. That join, I guess, would be the right term. Why don't we? Uh, if you could do me a favor, take the microphone again. My only concern, really, is that the overhang appears from the plan. If I'm understanding it correctly, the overhang, the roof overhang, is actually across the property yes so that is correct the the current overhang is seven inches over the edge of the uh, the edge of the building which equates to um, a one dependent upon where at the front end a 1.2 wait wait I got this wrong um, a six inch overhang at the front kind of transitioning down to a three inch overhang in the back where the current where the current wall is and the overhang is relative to the property line um, the new overhang on the proposed structure is four inches and that would change it to um, a three inch overhang uh, on the abutters over the abutters property to a zero inch overhang on the abutters property in the back yeah. I just don't think that we could approve a plan that actually results in a trespass Technically, it's a trespass. You're trespassing across with your eave overhang. You're over the property line. We couldn't approve that. That building would have to slide enough. So, it, at the very least, you're on your property entirely. I see. So it's not it's not a function of the water dripping down or anything like that. It, 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 that's one part of it. But the, the the vertical plane from your property line going up, if it intersects any part of your building, your building is trespassing on your neighbor's property. We couldn't. The board couldn't legally approve anything. Okay. We can't we can't approve a legal trespass. Okay. Um if we were to modify the structure Well uh, my, my suggestion is I mean I think we're talking inches. Right. Literally talking inches, and I'm just throwing this out there. But okay. I I think you'd have to slide it ever so slightly to the right 
and forward in order to get your overhangs so that they are completely on your property. Okay. That, so that I mean, the maximum would be three inches. It's not. It's not. Well, I, and I'm just. I'm just saying. I don't know what the magic number is, but it's got to be at least that. Yes. Okay. Um, you know, because it would just. I don't. I don't think there's any legal way we could prove. I mean, it's. It's currently over now. I get it, but you're asking for a variance, and the board couldn't approve a variance that allows a, your structure to be on your neighbor's property okay. in some shape, way, shape, sure or form. Yeah. So that's that was really my major heartburn with the proposal. I understand all of the all of the information you provided, but we couldn't we couldn't approve something where the eaves were actually over on the, the neighbor's property. That that's that's my major concern with what you're proposing. So as kind of a point of order, um, can it be contingent? If, if assuming everything else is appropriate and approved, can it be contingent? I think on the board can it? place conditions on the approval. Yes. Okay. Good. All right. Yeah, we we've, we've done that frequently on things. We go through the questions, and then we can come up with things for you. So if the chair wants to go through the questions, we can probably come up with that going through them. Okay. Okay. So, anybody have any questions before I start? All right. Uh, the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances. Mr. Chairman, I, you, you said that you'd explored a number of options. Did you, did you explore turning it and going parallel? I'm not sure I understand. Turn, turning the shed instead of going instead of going like this, turn it sideways and and moving it moving it in, in moving it away from the fence on the, from the property line on both the back and the side. Um, at 90 degrees. Yeah, I, I think that would yeah that would probably force it to <coughs> hit into the stairs almost. I, I don't know. I, I don't the think so. I, not not based on the measurements that you've got here. Mm -hmm. I think you can turn that and slide it over. In fact, you could slide it almost to the bulkhead. Yeah, uh, but that would limit the ability for us to use the backyard. Um, oh, as it would. It, it also limits the neighbors, though, if you're on, you know, on the line. So I guess I'm just trying to. When we do these things, even though we can't always get you into conformance, we try to get you more into conformance. Right. And this, doesn't seem to me that we're getting you more into conformance. And so I, I, by turning it and sliding it over, you would be you'd be further away from that back fence, plus further away from the left side there. So I, we need to find ways to try to get you more into conformance than you, than you currently are. Okay. And, that, and I understand you'd like to use the same location, but that doesn't improve the situation any. But if we were to shift it so that we're not encroaching on the neighbor's property, that would improve it. That that may may be enough for for the rest of the of the board. But I think we need to explore your other options here. And I don't know that you've explored relocating that shed in a different situ situating it to the opposite. So uh, that would be a big question for me. Okay, Mr. Stark. To your point, just I'm not sure that you're considering this additional part. Um, if you look at the big screen up there, um, this roof overhang, I mean, it, it's not, not not saying he's got to stay with the, the design he's got, but the design he's got is over 13, it's 13 and a half feet. And I think you're just looking, when okay. you're looking at the site plan, you're just I'm looking, just at, looking that. at the site. You're so, right, so you're correct. I think that's what he, the applicant is referring to being too close to the bulkhead. If he were to stay with this design, there's an additional four foot roof overhang there. I, you, you're, you're correct. I was. So I just wanted to clarify that. Yes, to tie back to that, <clears throat> is is that overhang on the current shed? Or is yes. That, all right, so you're not taking any more space? That's no. Okay. That overhang is the same footprint as the existing shed. Except for that's a building, right? That, I mean, that's yeah, that's building. part of the building. All we're doing is kind of opening it up, if you will, so we could have some outdoor storage okay. and having a roof over it. That helps. Thank you. Yeah. Right, so the need of the variance is due to the unique circumstance of the property and not to the general conditions in the neighborhood. If you just want to read into the record what you've got there, that would be great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, the building position predates the setback requirements for the town. The lot is too small to conform, um, and we didn't see any way to conform uh, by moving the shed. Um, within the lot size, meaning it would always be in the setbacks. 
and the granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect on either the use or the fair market value of abutting properties. Yeah, uh, what we re uh, wrote here was replacing a settling, rotting building with a new, similar structure, which would look much nicer, um, can only enhance the area. And the practical difficulty is not to resolve an action taken by the applicant or the prior owner. Yeah, this, this building and many in the Pineport Point area were built before the current setback requirements. And no other feasible alternative is available to the applicant except a variance. So there is no other feasible alternative as the lot size is so small. Replacing and repairing in place would require work crews and equipment on a butter's property for unacceptable periods of time. Um, attached structural engineer reports supports <coughs> requested variance as the best option due to previously mentioned challenges. And I did mention also just the fact that we'd have to remove two sections of fence uh, from our, our butter's properties in order to do it that way. And um, you caught me on this one. The granting of the variance will, re uh, will re result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly into conformance with surrounding properties. Yes, it will be aesthetically more attractive and in conformance with current building codes. And the granting of the variance uh, will not have any unreasonably adverse effect on the natural environment. No, this will not adversely affect the natural environment. In fact, we want to make the building smaller than the current one, um, and we also intend to remove the furnace that's in there. Um, and um, so, no. And the last one is uh, you're not in a flood zone. Um, no, it's it's 136 feet from the shoreland zone line, or 386 feet from the highest annual tide line. Okay. Uh, a couple questions that I have. Uh, what's stored in there now? Um. Uh, let's see. Um, lawn mowers, uh, paints. Um, so you're currently yard. using it yard tools, you're, et cetera. You're currently using it? As a shed, yeah. Okay. But there's also unused space in, in that there's a shower there, hmm. there's a toilet there, um, a sink there, et cetera. Um, so, um, yeah, it's currently used as a storage facility. Which is fine. The reason I ask that question is if something hasn't been used, a non-conforming use hasn't been used for a period of time, then you wouldn't be able to come forward on that issue. You meet that if you're using it. So that's why I asked. Oh, that. I see. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, to Mr. Longstaff's point, uh, are you putting a slab under here? Are you putting a frost wall? Are you putting posts? What are you doing there? So the engineer suggested um, concrete masonry blocks uh, reinforced with rib, um, tie bar, okay. rebar, sorry. <laughs> Rebar and, and concrete, etc. Uh, that was the record. But my understanding is there might be other options as well. Um, but this was um, what the the um, engineer and architect recommended. Well, the reason I'm asking is because you're going to have to go out into the other person's property to be able to do that, at least a couple of feet. Well, backfill. that's one of the reasons we chose this approach in that the concrete masonry blocks can be perfectly vertical underneath the structure, whereas if we were to use, say, sonar to, or, or footings, then we would have to go, go into the neighbor's yard because that extends beyond the footprint right, of good. the structure. Glad you thought of that. Let's do this. I'm going to open, the public, uh, open up to the public with anybody suggesting like you. Would you like to speak to this issue? Feel free to take the microphone, state your name, address, and we'll go from there, although I think we know it. My name is Mo Erickson, and um, I live at 288 Pine Point Road, but I own the property next to Ken and Heidi, along with my two sisters. It's been my family's property for over 100 years. Um, I guess uh, we're good neighbors. I really have no issue with what they want to do. That, that uh, garage shed has been there my whole life. Um, and uh, it could probably definitely be replaced. I think that's a fine idea. Um, a cup, my two sisters were a little curious about, well, I guess they were hoping that 
since they, they, we saw the plan and they were going to make it smaller, they had hoped that um, it would just be moved onto their property. I, I really don't care. It, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother the house, the yard. It's really no big deal. But it felt, my sisters felt like since they were going to be putting a new, new shed up, that maybe they would just move it over the two inches or the three inches. But again, I don't ever go in the yard and say, God, I wish that shed was moved over three inches. You no, know, the system's it, going to require that no matter what, so you're off the hook. <laughs> well, I, 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 I did feel a little relieved because, like I say, we're, we're fine neighbors, and I, I really don't care. Um, as far as the fence type, moving a fence, I mean, we're certainly amenable to, If I, I don't know if I'd want a bulldozer or a concrete truck in my backyard on the old cesspool fill there, but um, if they wanted to remove the fence and, and have the worker guys in my yard to do whatever they need to do, I... I really don't see any issue with that. Of course, I need to speak to my sisters, but, you know, they're fine neighbors, and, and I really don't see any issue with what they want to do. If, as long as they're not moving more on my property, I don't really care. I think Mr. Long. Cases like this were settled with a six gun and uh, or a, a back, rifle back or whatever. In my first term. They used to have <laughs> they used to have fence sitters who would, and fence viewers who would actually uh, not fence sitters fence viewers who would actually view the fence and make sure that there was room and, and that it was on the property line and all this stuff. It's way back in old old laws, but. No, the the um, the idea is that you should be able to make if it's your fence, you should be able to maintain your fence without trespassing on your neighbor's property. That's the main. That's but it's not a it's not a requirement. You could certainly get permission from your neighbor to go on their property and maintain your fence. It's more of a practical matter than a legal matter. Okay. Whereas the the rain cutters and such are a legal issue as opposed to well, it, it, I mean, again, it would be a civil. It's a civil matter. It's not. It's not a code issue. The code doesn't care if the rain off your roof falls on your neighbor's lawn. It doesn't care. The courts do if you are trespassing and, and your neighbor decides to sue you. They could legally go trim your roof off so that the water was no longer falling on their property. So I think it is incumbent upon any municipal <coughs> board or municipal codes department to require that these buildings meet setbacks. When they can't meet setbacks, the Board of Appeals may grant a variance if all conditions are met. But you can't approve a building that is not on its own property. You, you'd basically be setting the neighbors up if, if uh, the neighbor goes to sell and a mortgage loan inspection is done, that's going to be an encroachment. That's going to hold up the sale of the home or the, the transaction from happening. Um, so there's certainly no reason for a shed, not to diminish a shed, shed's important, but it's, a, it's an accessory building, it's not a dwelling. So there's no real good reason to put a shed on your neighbor's property. Mm -hmm. You should be able to move it onto that property, that's the basic thing. But while I'm at it, I just do have one comment and one question. I'm not quite sure that I understand how, how this project is going to differ from rebuilding or repairing the existing shed in place when you're clearly wider with your structure than your driveway going how, how is that building going to move in without knocking the fence down the whole way to get it to the back lawn I'm not quite sure I understand that I, I don't understand the question the building that you're proposing is wider than the driveway is to get it to the back corner <laughs> so how are you not going to knock the fence down getting is, is it going to be built in place well actually it's going to be recessed three feet back from the existing fence, so there'll be a gotcha, gap. Gotcha, but the, if you take the back width of your building that's right up against your property line, yeah. what's that dimension? Um, yeah, you're, right. I, just, I think what he's asking is, is 
Is uh, it going to be built I, in place or not? Yeah. I was under the impression that you were moving a pre-built shed oh, no, in. No. So, so I, okay, so if you're building it in place, what is the difference between build, building a new building in place and simply repairing the building that you have there? Well, my understanding in talking with a builder about trying to elevate it and construct it in place is that uh, it would require encroaching on the neighbor's property to, to jack it up and lift it up, et, et cetera. Okay. Um, so that's not going to happen in tearing it down and then building a new one? No, I mean, the only time we really have, I was thinking about this, the only time we would really have to go on the neighbor's property is the walls can be built, erected in place, and, and frankly, I don't think the neighbors would mind if we were there for a short period mm -hmm. of time, but, but putting a, installing the siding, I think is about, and probably the roofing, would be the only time we would have to access to the neighbor's um, um, property. Okay, I, I still struggle with, I, I don't see the difference. I don't see the difference in the impact between repairing in place the, well, and again, this is not my, my issue, this is the board. The no, board can ask these questions, but I don't. But, going with it, cause I'm, I'm a little well, I, I, I just don't, I, I mean, the whole premise was that you got to tear this building down, so <coughs> you're asking for a variance to put a new structure up, when effectively you could you could probably elevate and repair the existing structure and not even have, have to be here. <laughs> well, it would require lifting the whole building up, and we've got two separate parts of it, one of which is settling a lot more relative to the other. Um, and the reality is most of, all, all of the structure is not to current code. Um, so I, I just think it would be hugely wasteful, uh, challenging, and, and much more expensive uh, when we could you know, mm -hmm. put put that money to better use improving the property. Um, if I can add something real quick, I think just the from the perspective of the, the owner, the, the cost to save the structure and the cost to put in a new structure is, is almost just, it, it's almost a wash. And in my opinion of this, um, I, I see it as pretty straightforward as far as putting in the new structure being built in place as long as, uh, obviously, as Mr. Longstaff said, it can't be legally over the boundaries of the adjacent property, um, you just have to revise the dimensions so that it's 100% it's vertical and horizontal dimensions are on your property. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I understand now, and I, I agree. Ask, ask him. <laughs> Don't ask me. <coughs> I asked you about the rule. Oh, ask him, ask, him, ask him how he's going to hook it up. Uh, I see a sink being proposed in the, inside the, the new structure. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay. The reason I'm asking that is because it's in the, in the back of my head so there's a rule about that. But no, there's no rule. But it has to be, is it going to be hooked to the main house plumbing? Yes. Okay. So and there's existing plumbing running right. to the shed currently. Okay. So that would be all done by the plumbing code? And yes, absolutely. Okay. That's just a utility sink. Just That's it, yeah. <coughs> so <coughs> we've gone through the items here. We've opened the public hearing. I haven't closed the public hearing, I don't believe. I'm going to do that just to make sure. All right, so I think, I think overall what I'm hearing from the board is fairly straightforward. Um, but challenging. We want it on his property, including the ledge, the edging. I don't think one eighth of an inch onto the property ledging meets the requirement, in my opinion. I think it needs to be over a little bit. That's my personal opinion. Does anybody have a different view of this as how this lays out? <coughs> does, does anybody have thoughts as far as where you want, where you believe this should go? Should it be relocated? Should it be attached? Should it even be there? What's the board's feeling over this overall? But where it's, it's got to be, no matter what, it's got to be completely on your property. Overhang and everything, that's got to be completely on your property. As Mr. Longstaff sta stated, we can't approve a trespass on somebody else's property. So that's going to have to happen. I, I think, with that being done, I, I guess what I would, 
I, I could probably live with it, but I have one other question for you. The overhang. Um, is there is there a reason that you can't spin that building or put the overhang on the right side? So that so that it would be all in line instead of being on the side of it. Oh. So that, which would give you the room to, to make that much more conforming. So, in other words, uh, turn the peak kind of 90 degrees in the in the footprint. Uh, hadn't thought about it. Um, considering the dimensions, it would probably. I, I'm not a builder, so I don't know. Um, but but the most straightforward way I think of building this, and and I have no problem, you know, conforming and making sure we're not trespassing, as we talked about earlier. Yeah, and so that would require a peak going this way and actually would redirect the water flow into this abutter's yard in the backyard. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Again, I, 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 I don't have any problem conforming and not making sure we're not trespassing there. I, I, I understand that. I just want to make sure that everything had been explored, the other options. So. Yeah. And I don't know how the other, how the rest of the board feels about that, but I, I just, I like to see us move away from the property lines a little bit whenever we possibly can. If, if the only way of doing it is to be right on the line, then, then I, I, I probably wouldn't hold it up. Uh, but I'd like to make certain that there aren't other options for it. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, obviously, we want to see it away from, as far away from, you know, reasonably uh, from the borderline of the adjacent property as possible. Um, as a side note, unrelated, you know, if there are any concerns from the neighbor, which there appears to be none, you know, there are other things you could do, like put a gutter on it to mitigate any water spillage into the area, as an example, um, on that side. But I, I see this as a very straightforward application. Have, have you talked to the abutting uh, property to the rear? No. Um, they, they're they not there year-round, um, and and we don't have their phone number. We send a letter to them. Do you know their name? Eddie? No. It's, it's fine. It's oh, okay. Then now. we did. <laughs> <clears throat> I've got no letters, no phone calls. Um, we've gone through the list of items. I don't think we, unless the board wants to, need to go through each one of these line by line. If the board is comfortable just um, allowing the shed as designed but placed on so that the lip of the property is, say, three inches inside of the, of the, of the setback, of the, of the, the side line. I see it. It's arbitrary. I I just have one concern. I know Brian, you, you made a comment earlier about there's no zoning regulation about water, your water going on to a, another person's property, but there certainly is in a court of law. You can't take water from your property and dump it onto somebody else's property. Right. What I said is the building code doesn't recognize that. Zoning does. I'm agreeing with you. Okay. <laughs> because as far as I'm concerned, this has got to be moved in such a way that water does not go onto anybody's property other than their own. Period. Yeah. So that would require moving it over, putting it gutter up. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, the water would drip pretty much vertically, though, so that if we were to push the roof, the edge of the roof, so that it's within our property, would, would that address it or as opposed to a gutter? My concern about a gutter is that, and, and I know we're talking inches here, but this yard is so, so small and we don't have a lot of room. The gutter would add an additional probably three inches that we would have to move the, the structure, and that's my concern there. I think that would be an issue that you would have to take up with your builder. Okay. and the engineer that's on this project. As far as <coughs> any motion that is made on the floor to approve this appeal, um, 
it would be with a contingency, for example, that the building, the shed were to be 100% inside of your property uh, and any water mitigation that would ensure to spill on your property would have to be handled between you and your builder. Okay. As an example. I do want to hit uh, two more things, and thank you. Uh, on the dimensional standards, uh, practical difficulty, a case where strict application of the dimensional standards of the ordinance to the property for which variance is sought would both preclude a use of the property which is permitted in the zone in which it is located and also would result in significant, significant economic injury to the applicant uh, is one of the requirements. Uh, dimensional standards, those provisions of the ordinance which relate to a lot of area, a lot of coverage, but, uh, frontage and setback, including buffer requirements. So one of the questions on the practical difficulty is, uh, does whatever we put on that have a significant impact? I'll read it again. Case with strict application of the dimensional standards of the ordinance to the property for which a variance is sought would both preclude the use of the property which is permitted in the zone uh, in which the, the property the unit is located and also would result in significant economic injury to the applicant. And they're describing what uh, the, the words meanings there. And it's important because uh, in trying to accommodate, here is my, my challenge with this. It's a shed. It's time for that shed to go. The time to do the right thing is now, not you know, if it needs to be done. I'm not saying get rid of the shed, but to keep the exact same size shed isn't necessarily a reasonable statement. It might be, might be. And I'm sure the applicants feel it is, but it's, it's fairly large. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's 13 and a half feet wide by, at the, at the wide, and it's uh, just shy of 15 and a half long. 10 feet, uh, 10 feet wide, it's the narrowest. Um, that's a good size shed. And it's, like you said, it's 15 and a half feet long. Um, I get wanting to put storage in there. I get wanting to put a sink in there. I get wanting to have space in there. But, but by most standards, a typical shed is 6 by 12 or 12 by 18 or whatever. That's a relatively large structure, whatever you want to declare a shed size is. Um, we're talking about trying to keep it right on the edge of the line of a property. And I, I, to me, it comes back to your comment, me bringing it more in line, with, more in compliance with the rules. Well, if we're doing the same, moving it over three inches does not put that more in compliance than right uh, So I'm a little bit more challenged by the whole concept of, okay, yep, that's there, we just want to replace it as opposed to it's out, it outlived its useful life. If this was a home that's outlived its useful life, what would we do? Well, we'd need to give them a home because that would, that would meet the requirement of the strict application of this dimensional standards of the ordinance to this property, which the variance is sought would both preclude the use of the property, which is permitted in the zone, and would have a significant economic injury to the applicant. Um, any size shed there is not going to preclude the use unless it's you know, small plastic one, uh, and it's not going to affect the economic value of the property, in my opinion. A shed is a shed is a shed. Again, reasonably sized shed. This is the perfect world shed. So is the board comfortable with that? I'm just throwing that out there from the board's perspective. I'm okay with the board's overall opinion on that. I, I, I'm more comfortable with the shed being there where they're reducing size and agreeing that they're going to move it over so it's not going to be encroaching or trespassing on anybody else's property. If they were trying to increase the size or not and, and not decrease the size, I would have a problem with it. But where they're doing that and they're they're saying they're they're willing to move it over so that none of the water goes onto the abutters' properties, I'm okay with it. Because I mean there are some there's some lawn equipment that can be pretty big. I have my I know my riding lawnmower is pretty much probably I don't know, six by 
So wait a minute. Whatever with the blade on it. The lot is 65 well, I know. by 40. <laughs> I know, but I mean, that's I just putting one thing in there, more. You know? <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. It's a big shed, but in some ways it's really not. I tend to agree with Mr. Crockett. Okay. Other members? I, I am, am more with Mr. Maroon. I would like to see it more into conformance. It doesn't have to be, it's not going to be able to be completely in conformance. I would just like to see it more in conformance than it is. You know, like a foot away from the property line on both sides or whatever it takes. But Are we allowed, Mr. Longstaff, are we allowed to apply contingency in our motion from a certain footage setback? For instance, if if we are we allowed to to say that you know we have, you can you can build the ship within 12 inches on either side of the property line. We can do that. If if the applicant is agreeable to that, you can certainly make that amendment to the um, appeal. Yep. It doesn't make much sense for the board to just unilaterally say. That's you can have the variance if you put it two feet from the line when that's not going to be what they want. Right, so right. That's, that's that, my, I understand. Thank you. <laughs> I think what, what we've always done as a board is we've always looked for folks to come in here and reduce their encroachment. We've always been pretty standard with that. As long as someone was willing to go less on the lesser side, we've been pretty inclined to consider that and see that more favorably. And I think that the applicant's doing that. Like Mr. Longstaff said, I don't know if telling them they're going to have to, be able, they're going to, have to put it a foot away from the property line is going to really be something that they're going to really want to do. I mean, the alternative is they, they can let the shed rot out, which it's doing now on the bottom, and fall over on the other person's property <laughs> and then have to move it. So I we want, do I we want them doing that? I completely agree. And, and my thought would be, you know, we don't arbitrarily give a, a linear value of three and a half inches or three and five eight five eighths inches from the property lines, but we give the <laughs> contingency that one, the shed is one hundred percent inside of the owner's property, two, that any water spillage from the shed verified by the builder will fall on their property and not the adjoining adjoin, adjacent properties. That's now, now just to be difficult, which I like to do if that's wrong. Water splashes. Water splashes six or eight inches. Are we talking water splashing? Or are we talking about water dropping? What is our definition of that? If it's not going to splash together. Then the splash is going to And we already presented that we would look at that option. I mean, for me, that's a means and methods question for the contractor or the builder building the shed. And I don't have the expertise to determine what. I'm just throwing up, village goes I'm over just there. up the thought as, as, as presented, mm -hmm. and, and if the argument is that the water can't splash on the other person's property or be on the other person's property, in fact, if you put it on the line, it's going to be on that person's property because it's going to splash. Is there a fence that runs down past the building? To the it looks like there was. No in the picture you had up, Brian, I thought there was a tree or something there Here's when you did the Google map. The area that we're asking about. Yeah. I can't tell what that here. is. Um, and this is actually only about a third of the total roof space. Most of the roof space directs the water onto our property. I don't know if that makes a difference or not, but, but this is the area that we're talking about. By, by the Google Maps that's up on the TV there, is that a is that just a buffer with trees, or is there a fence that goes down? There is a fence that goes from it. Is a, there's a um, stockade fence that begins you got your on the Brian. corner of our, um, our shed, comes out <coughs> to where the tree is, that little puppy tree, and then it's a slip rail fence after that. Okay. But it doesn't go down past the... No, no. Obviously. But there is a fence. The existing shed has two doors on the front, just yes. like what you're proposing here? Yeah. What are those for? Um, just being able to put stuff in and out, as opposed to this little door here. Okay. Does that help? Yeah. Now, Mr. Longstaff, we're going to, it looks like there's a couple of changes. One, we want it moved over so it's not trespassing, so that's going to be a dimensional plan rework for them to bring to you. 
the, the applicant also mentioned that there was a window or something on there on the new plan that's not supposed to be there. If we do oh, anything Bob, with this, are we going to make this more convenient? You're just going to turn it. Yeah, yeah, we're thinking more of a skylight window as opposed to... Right, I just want to make sure that you, when you bring something, Mr. Longstaff, it's what's going to be there, okay. not with something that could be there. You're not approving, you're not approving the window yeah, or the building design. You're just approving the setbacks, and that's, that's what you... Right. I just didn't know if you needed a whole redesign of this. Yeah. Okay. So what's the board's... Um, <coughs> I, I think we should still get on to the question. I'm not 100% comfortable with it being exactly right on the line. I, I'd like to see at least, you know, at least a half a foot off the line anyway. I just, I don't think that that's an unreasonable request. And even if they, even if they have to narrow this, building up another six inches or so, that's, you know, this is not as, even a foot. That's not that big a deal. Oh, it's fine. If you, if you just have to decrease the entire width of the building. Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Um, we're not, I mean, we're not, we're not builders or contractors here in this capacity right now. I think trying to determine inches or, as Mr. Longs has said, arbitrarily determine the distance from the property line, um, I don't think that's really in our best interest at this point. Would it be possible to, po to table this for one month or two months and allow the applicant to come back with a revised drawing that has the building clearly inside of their property line? We could certainly do that. I, I threw another thought up, though, that just might make it easier. Um, <clears throat> uh, bring in, this isn't my idea, but it's a good idea. If you brought that building back, if you brought that building out six inches for the sake of discussion by foot, and you shorten the building by a foot, you get to the same place. The same width is going to be from there to there. The building is still, there's a de minimis effect on the building itself, the shed itself. It solves the problem of the water, <coughs> in my opinion. What you're saying is take the 15 foot 6 dimension and shorten that. Correct. And then widen the 9 foot 4 dimension to make up for the room that you're you're losing on the length. You're already back behind your stairs, so you could expand that way. You could expand to the southeast and shorten that, and then you could slide the whole building over slightly to get it away from the property line. But just by just by changing the 15 foot six dimension to to 15 feet. Turn it closer to a square than a rectangle. And, and what does that accomplish? Gets it away from the property line. That would allow you to slide it sideways away from the property line, which is the hang-up right now. Did they should no, no. <coughs> let me let me do this. Can I do this? Sure, go ahead. <laughs> so, so this dimension right here. Yep. Okay. If you shorten that by whatever a foot, six inches, even, okay, that gets that gets your space between your building and that. That increases that, so you have more space to stay in. Allows you to slide this way. This dimension is going to stay the same anyway. If it's just going to slide back here, that's not going to lose you anything. You could easily make that, a, you know, six inches to a foot further <coughs> that way, by shortening that and widening that. Widening mm -hmm. out that way. Yeah. yeah. You slide. You but can make that. And turn this here too. Right. And I'm already saying you're not going to have that problem because you're sliding it this way. You can you can adjust that dimension and shorten that dimension up a little bit in life. It's just a matter of working with the dimensions and you can end up with exactly the same amount of square footage 
and allow yourself enough room to back it off the property and still clear your building the same way you're doing here. But I, I thought as long as we address the fact that we're not trespassing and the water's not flowing, then the board would consider that. Right. I think that's exactly what you're talking about. With, this, with, with this, the building with the dimensions that you proposed is what I'm saying. By just adjusting the dimensions slightly, you can accomplish both everything you need and everything that they're objecting to. I think that's what Mr. Longstaff's talking about because what we're thinking about, you've already said with gutters and other things, we're, we're thinking about six inches to eight inches. If you take away that six inches of the 15.6 and put it onto the other, you're sliding it over six to eight inches, so you're going to be that almost full foot or, or close to a half a foot away from the property line. So that's going to allow all the concerns about the water and things to fall on your property. You can still add the other six inches width-wise because you're going to be fine. Yeah, you'll have plenty of room. Yeah, and, and you'll be able you to move it. Between the, it still gives you the gap between the house and the shed because you shortened it up. Could we also, um, I'm going to look at here, it, it's nine feet, four inches wide on the main building. Yep. And then the little overhang is uh, four foot two. Right, so you could bring that out. So if we, if we make <coughs> this main building nine feet, you know, and, you know, pushed it over six inches and made this four, four feet instead of four foot two, that would give us six inches. Right. My my challenge is doing the bare minimum doesn't quite meet the the, the we're doing the absolute bare minimum on a property that, that really shouldn't even the shit shouldn't even be there. So it is allowed because it's there now. But the fact is we're forcing something into something that is gonna come back to bite us on another thing. So I, I just I'm a little confused as to what the challenge is given that you're tearing the whole thing down anyway. Why you can't make it work with keeping the square? We're not even challenging the square footage. We're just saying get it off the property lines. And I, I think that other six inches too. If you moved it over six to eight inches or so, you've also got no problem for somebody doing siding. I know your neighbor doesn't care. Your next but one might. We we do have to address that because the next person that comes before us may have a neighbor that cares a lot that that person's three or four inches on their property doing repairs or doing siding. So this is something that we have to consider not as just yours, we need to consider this unilaterally for everything that we look at. So that's what we're doing. That's why the board's saying, let's move it over six to eight inches, let's make you completely in conformance, give you some room to work on that side. Everybody's happier. You go to sell it, the neighbors go to sell it. There's no question, it's clearly on your property and there's no encroachment and the water's not gonna drop on their property or anything. I think we've solved a lot of problems for everybody. If, if you want, one of the suggestions that was made, and I think it may be appropriate at this point to bring it up, is if you're uncomfortable with where we're at, <laughs> could you kind of hear where we're at? If you would like to have it tabled to go back, sit down, talk with your, your architect, your engineer, whoever, and come back next meeting, you'd be first on the agenda. You can't build it right now anyway. Um, and so we're fine with that if that would allow you to be able to come back, kind of get a regroup, maybe sit down with Brian and talk to him a little bit more because he kind of gets our quirkiness. And it might make it easier, and that way you don't feel like you're being shoved into a situation that you're uncomfortable with and regret whatever happens. But that's your call. We can't, re we can't table it just for more information because we've got the information. That, that way you can visualize it. You can go to your plan designer, have them move it over. You can talk to Brian, see what he's going to suggest, and then go to them, move it over, visualize it. You can, even, you can even map it out. I mean, you can take a chalk line for crying out loud, go over to Lowe's or Home Depot or something and just snap it and put it in places to where it would be, and you could see what it was going to be like just moving it that, that distance. It sounds like the board is determined to do it that way. In other words, if I come back and say I don't like it, um, and there's no, no compelling reason from your perspective. Can you go to the microphone? It, it sounds like the board is, is determined with this as a solution, and if I come back and say, I don't like it, and here's why. I, I'm not sure it's necessarily going to resonate actually, with you. Actually, neither is true. Okay, neither is true. 
The board isn't saying that they're not going to approve it, nor is the board saying they will approve it if you come back with it, with right. a new design. You're hearing honest conversation live as, as, as it flows, and you're hearing um, a, a raw opinions based on what we're experiencing. Okay. We not, we're not saying that we wouldn't approve it today. We're not saying that we would approve it with a new design. What we are saying is we obviously have some angst. Mm -hmm. Some of us. Mm -hmm. Some of us don't. So it, you're, it's your call. The trouble is with this one as opposed to the last one is if you come back, if we decline it, you're going to have to wait a year on this one because there it, it would be not a substantially different plan that would be coming forward. It would be essentially the same thing. You'd just be moving it over. So you'd be stuck waiting a year before you come back, in my opinion. Okay. As opposed to going back, not being pushed, not being rushed, think it over, talk with this long staff. Again, he's kind of got our quirks. He knows what we think. Okay. He can't guarantee it either. Right. And I can't tell you right now that it wouldn't go through. I, I, I don't have a pulse, to be honest with you. I really don't have a pulse on this one. Usually I do, and I don't on this one. Okay. But what I am suggesting is it's obvious you're uncomfortable, and rather than <coughs> you being uncomfortable, I'd rather see you be comfortable than than being shoved into a situation that, that isn't going to work for you for whatever reasons. And if you come back and say, this doesn't work for us because of X, Y, and Z, then we can make our call. But at least you've had the opportunity to, 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 to process it. Okay, I mean, fair enough. And, and, and possibly you, there may be a real compelling reason that you can't make the changes that we're talking about. And if that's the case, then you know, all bets are off and, you know, everything changes. So, so That yeah. would be hard. I mean, that's my personal advice. It's your call, but all you have to do is say that we'd like to table until the next meeting. You'll be first on the agenda. If it doesn't mess up with your lives. Uh, Before we make a decision, I would just like to see it because my, my concern is, is going through there. You, you don't feel that that's going to be a problem or it's a not challenge? Go ahead. We haven't caused any divorces yet. <laughs> we can have them shut the camera off if you'd prefer. <laughs> I don't want to encroach on this area anymore. It's already tight in here, so I would per I would be perfectly fine with making this larger building a bit narrower to get off the property line. Up, you know, if it's nine inches or I mean, and this is six inches here. And this is where I honestly think, unless you've got a, a reason to have to get this thing done today. For the sake of your marriage, <laughs> I honestly think the best thing you can do for yourselves is, is so go back, take a breath. It's not going to change anything. In other words, you're not going to come back, and if you come back with the same plan, we're not going to penalize you for that. We may not approve it just like we wouldn't approve it today, or we may approve it just like we would have approved it today. But at least it gives you time to walk through the process. I have no desire to have you shoved into something that's not going to get what you need. At the same vein, I think you're hearing that we have some angst from past experience that, that that may not work in your favor, or we'll come up with something that boxes you into something that you didn't want, and then you got to come back again. And, and quite frankly, the biggest question for us with this type of appeal is always the no feasible alternative. That's the toughest one. This one has it in there. The last one didn't have it in there. That's the toughest one for us to come up with, that there is absolutely no feasible alternative. And if we voted no on that, we could technically vote no on the appeal. So I think... Like the chair is saying, I think it would probably be good for you folks just to have a table if you're agreeable with that and just talk to Mr. Longstaff, talk to whoever did your designs and see how it looks and just go out and walk it. I mean, you can walk the property. You might not be able to now or, or Thursday when we get all the snow, but I mean, you'll, I, I think you'll see it's probably going to work and it's probably going to be better off for everybody involved. The other thing is you've answered the question of the feasible alternative and actually brings up a good point. That's something you should answer in the next coming back. There isn't any feasible alternative because we went back, like you said, and looked at different choices, and this is the best we can do, and here's why. Right. <coughs> yeah, there is an alternative, and here's what it is. How does that work for you? Now, all of a sudden, you've got control again. And the goal of the board is not to, to nitpick. But it's the same thing. We're trying to, to do the right thing uh, universally. And, and this is one of those weird ones. It's just a weird one. 
If you could take the microphone, that would be great. And, and I think you heard you say Yes, uh, we would prefer to table it to make sure that we are fully informed on, on this alternative that before a decision is made. Choice. Okay. And, and I, I would move that the board accept them tabling this to bring it back to the first meeting. So I move to uh, table appeal number 2598 for one month. Second. And bring yeah. up uh, first on the agenda. For and have it be the first on the agenda in the March meeting. It doesn't work. cost you anything more. What was that? Well, it, it, we can make it, this doesn't have to be an exact architectural or, or a survey drawing if we're making, kind of, I, I guess what I'm saying is can we take the existing plan and just cut and paste? I'm sorry? Cut and paste? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty straightforward and we can measure pretty well. Yeah, I, I think as long as you, you come in with the with the dimensions of the building and how far it is away from the property lines and stuff, that's that's gonna tell us as long as it's clear the and on paper. After. Okay. Yeah. Correct yeah, no, me if I'm wrong, but I think all we're asking is that the shed that they want, whatever that might be, is totally on their property. And any waterfall is on their property. A little off of the property, and so that all the waterfall is on right. the property, so six inches. Which, which basically water. means that all you got to do is come up with the shape. Maybe just look at the shape a little bit. Change the shape. It doesn't have to be what it was before. It could be different. You could move it 90 degrees. All right. But basically, all we want is we want to make sure that it's all on your property and the water falls off onto your property. Okay. That's it. And not the bare minimum. Am I wrong? Yeah, and not the bare minimum. Not the, the okay, we've, we, we've got a sheet of... of carbon paper to see if any water falls off that side. In other words, we want it to be make sense. Right. That's all. That's, that's, what I'm, that's where I'm at. Uh, yeah, yeah we've, we've had folks in the past that have come in and they come to us with the bare minimum they could possibly do to just get it done. And if you folks can expand that a little bit to help us out, I think that would be great. And where it's coming from is the, the more in conformance with. See, meeting, meeting the law, which is getting it off somebody else's property, is not more in conformance with. It doesn't mean the law. So, to me, more in conformance means <coughs> more in conformance with our rules, which is you're supposed to be 15 foot, but you can't do that. Right. We know that. And we're not asking for that. But we're asking for some movement to get some room there. So there's been a motion to the table. Till the February meeting. Do you want to go to March? No, the, the March meeting. Maybe more time? April. Maybe the April? Maybe the April, Maybe the April meeting? Um, no, I think we can do this in March. No. Yeah, we have and today's the eighth, so you got to. I mean, it's it's literally just a matter of taking the plan that you have and just sort of blocking out that area where the shed is and drawing a different shape in there with a, a ruler so that it's to scale right. and seeing if you can come up with something that still gives you your clearances and gives you the same amount of square feet as what you're proposing, or maybe a little less if you need to, but whatever you can live with. You know, okay. that's, and so you, you do that a few different <laughs> times, a few different iterations, try a few different things. This one doesn't work because. That one didn't work because. This one might work, you know, and maybe it's, it's getting it off that line by another six or, six or eight inches. By bringing those three in, you've answered the number one question. You've answered the biggest question by bringing three choices and saying, look, we've looked at different alternatives and, you know, pick. <laughs> you know, and, and it, this is the one that seems to make the most sense. Do you agree or not? And, and then that, that solves the problem, okay. I believe. Again, it all comes down to how everybody on the board votes at the time. Yeah, and I don't think it's going to be that hard for whoever did this for you to, to move that a little bit because I don't think it's going to take them much time. They probably have it on a computer okay. diagram someplace where they can probably just click it and move it wherever you tell them to move it. <laughs> or you yeah. can just do it. We're not, we're not requiring a whole new site plan. We're just requiring... Just just play around with it a little bit. 
and actually the board's only going to be approving the setback, so you don't even have to have your final design done for the shed as long as you know what size it's going to be. Okay. You know, so you don't even have to worry about those architectural details at this point. It's just getting a shape that fits in that block like Mr. Uh, Blaze said. Okay. With overhang. Yes, I, I understand. And water. <laughs> and water, yeah. <laughs> okay. So we've got a motion to table. It's been seconded by me. Seconded. I did. Uh, any discussion? There's no, there's no discussion. All in favor? It's tabled. So thank you. Feel free. Sorry to put you through it, but we'd rather make sure you get what you need. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this one second anything for the board. I do not have anything for the board. No candy. Or anything? No candy. No. Any other board members? Any? Hmm? So we have a couple of people who are going to be out next meeting. Is that right? Oh. Yeah. You are. Mr. Are you here next week? Mr. Richard? Yeah. Uh, we can check. I can check to see if Mr. Ri Mr. Richard will be available. March, I'll be here. You're going to be here, Ed. Do you, as far as you know, you're going to be here. Nope. Karen may be able. I, I think we'll be okay. So, but. We'll definitely check with uh, Mr. Richard, make sure that... I'll harass Karen. Harass her. Yeah. Well. Okay. Anything else? Uh, board? That's fine right there. Okay. Thank you. I'll grab that. So you have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. I'll second it. Yeah. All in favor? Thank you very much. Have a great night.